Good day everyone! Welcome to General Chemistry 2. Today, we are going to talk about reversible chemical reactions. Chemical reactions are processes undergone by certain substances to create new substances. Most of us know that chemical reactions are one-directional reactions. But in reality, there are other chemical reactions wherein when two reactants combine, they yield a product and the product breaks down to yield again or to create again its original reactants. And that uh, example alone is under reversible chemical reaction. We have three characteristics in order for us to identify or classify chemical reactions which are reversible. Number one, products recombine to form reactants. Like what I've said earlier, when two reactants or when reactants combine and yield that product, that product will break down again to create its original reactants. Next, number two, reaction never goes to completion. Both on the reactant side and the product side, there is a continuous or an ongoing process. And so, when for example, the reactants, okay, when the reactants um, combine to yield that product, the product again will break down to create again the original reactants. And it's uh, the, the process that happen on the recombination and breaking down is continuously happening on both sides of the equation or both sides of the reaction. And number three, it attains dynamic equilibrium. When a certain chemical reaction attains chemical equilibrium, okay, because of the because of the uh, same rate of reaction that happened on both sides of the equation we can consider them as reversible chemical reactions. It is dynamic because the processes that happen on both sides, the reactants and the product sides, uh, it is a continuous process and so it is dynamic. So an example in our atmosphere is the equilibrium between nitrogen dioxide or NO2 and dinitrogen tetroxide or N2O4. Most of them or most of the NO2 in the atmosphere comes from automobiles. It also forms from the breakdown of N2O4 in an equilibrium reaction. While NO2 is being formed from N2O4, N2O4 is being formed from NO2 by the reverse process. So we have this equation. The first equation is the transformation of N2O4 into NO2. Okay? And then we, the second equation is the transformation again or the reverse process of NO2 to create again N2O4. Based on the illustration or based on the equation presented, we can say that this uh, example attains chemical equilibrium. Hence, we can consider it as a reversible chemical reaction. Although it may seem that nothing is happening in a reaction container where a state of equilibrium has been reached, this is not the case. When a reaction reaches equilibrium, the forward reaction continues to occur, but the reverse reaction also occurs at the same rate. So the forward reaction in the first equation, okay, it, uh, it shows that... Um, the rate of the reaction continuously or it is an ongoing process. Same is true with the reverse reaction. So as the rate of the reaction occur, occurring on the reactant side okay, is equal to the rate of the reaction that occurs on the product side. That is why like what the second statement in order for us to identify a certain chemical reaction if it is reversible, it is never Never, it never goes to completion because there is a continuous process of creating and breaking down of the product and the reactants or the product and the reactant substances. This is the rate or this is state of equilibrium 
where the forward and reverse reactions occur at the same rate is represented using an equilibrium arrow. So we can see here the arrow which uh, denotes the idea that the chemical reaction already reached equilibrium. Hence, the process or this type of chemical reaction is a reversible chemical reaction. When any chemical reaction reaches the equilibrium state, the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. There is no change or net change in the concentrations of the reactants and products. So we have here the example in the conversion of N2O4 to NO2. So based on the picture, the conversion of N2O4 to NO2 is reversible or it is a reversible reaction and reaches a state of equilibrium. As you can see on the illustration A and B, these show the system before equilibrium. And the illustration C and D, these show the system after equilibrium. At equilibrium, the numbers of N2O4 and NO2 molecules do not change. However, N2O4 is still being converted to NO2 while NO2 is converted back to NO4, N2O, N2O4 at an equal rate. So in order for us to have a better understanding, let's have or let's put it into analogy. On the left side, we have the CTA. And then on the right side, we have CTB. In CTA, there are 1,000 cars. While in CTB, there are 2,000 cars. Now, both cities are connected by a highway. Now, on average, the cars living on city A, there are 100 cars living on or living from city A going to city B. Okay? Per hour, there are 100 cars living. And on the other side, there are also 100 cars going from city B to city A per hour so if we are going to write that the rate of the forward reaction which is letter letter A or the leaving of cars from letter A to letter B is 100 cars per hour and the rate on the reverse rate on the reverse uh, reaction is also 100 cars per hour okay does both CTA and CDB loses or that does both do both CTA and CTB uh, the number of cars on each side decreases its number or changes its number no because in city A, if there are 100 cars leaving or going from city A to city B per hour and it receives 100 cars okay, from city B going to city A, its number of cars is still constant because as it releases 100 cars per hour, it also receives 100 cars per hour. Okay, so it does not necessarily mean that they must be equal in the number of cars to attain equilibrium. We should take into consideration the number or the concentration on both sides, on side A and side B. And if the rate or if the forward reaction or rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, so, this uh, these example or this type of equation is reversible. Now, let's proceed with the equilibrium constant. Now, equi the equilibrium constant, we are going to take into consideration the reversible chemical reactions as it achieves chemical equilibrium. Now, we are going to solve here 
the equilibrium constant of those chemical or those reversible chemical reactions. Now, we can derive the equilibrium expression by just merely looking at the equation given. Okay, so we have here N2 combines with H2 and yields NH3. Now, in first, we need to balance the equation first by putting coefficients. Now, we have in here, we have 1 for N2, we have 3 for H2, and 2 for NH3. So that the, the equation will be balanced. Okay? Now, so in order for us to derive the equilibrium expression, we need to have an ideal formula or an ideal equation. Okay, so we have this one. The big or the capital letters, okay, they represent the substances, okay, and then the small letters represent or the lowercase letters represent the coefficient of the substances. Okay, so the 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 equilibrium expression is written as Ke, Keq, or the equilibrium constant, which is equal to the concentration on the product divided by the concentration of the reactants. Now, as you can see here, the capital letters are enclosed inside a bracket. And their coefficients become their exponents okay so that is how we derive the equilibrium expression so we have here the general steps in solving for the equilibrium constant and pressure constant first one we have to identify the given and balance the chemical equation provided and the number two write the equilibrium expression of the equation so that you will not be confused or you will know how to uh, substitute the values next we have number three we need to substitute the values in the expression and then number four solve properly with complete solutions okay let's have an example Sample problem number one. Sulfur trioxide is placed in a reaction container heated to 130 degrees Celsius and allowed to reach a state of equilibrium. We have here the chemical equation to consider. The equilibrium concentrations are determined to be, for SO2 we have 0.26 molarity, for O2 we have 0.013 molarity, and for SO3 we have 0.12 molarity. Now, letter A, write the equilibrium expression for this reaction. And letter B, calculate the value of the equilibrium at 130 degrees Celsius. Now, based on our general steps, we are to identify the given and balance the chemical equation. Since we already have the balanced chemical equation here, so we can now immediately proceed to letter A. So for letter A, we are going to write the equilibrium expression. We have KEQ is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. And our products are SO2 and O2. So, that will be our numerator. And for our denominator is the concentration of our reactants, which is SO3 divided by SO3. Now, our coefficient will be there, or the, the coefficient of each substance will be there, exponents now now this will be our equilibrium expression for this problem now we can now proceed to letter b in computing for the value of keq now so for letter b we have keq we are going to substitute the values so the molarity of each substance we have for SO2, we have 0 0.026 molarity squared times 0 0.013 molarity divided by 0 
molarity is squared. Okay, now, we can add the parentheses here so that you can just get first the product of the numerator and divide it to the denominator. Now, in putting them in our calculator, the answer for Ke or the constant will be 0 0.00061027788 or we can have our scientific notation for this one which is equal to 6.10 times 10 raised to negative 4 okay so our rule will be two decimal places only so we have 6.10 times 10 raised to negative 4 that is the value of our ke okay next now let's proceed with the sample problem number two consider this following reaction pcl5 breaks down to create pcl3 and cl2 at a specific temperature, the equilibrium concentrations were determined to be, for PCL5, we have 0 0.20 molarity, for PCL3, we have 0 0.025 molarity, and for CL2, we have 0 0.025 molarity. What is the value of the equilibrium constant? Now, since it is already given, the, the, the equation is already given, and as you can see, it is already balanced, so we can immediately proceed in the next step which is writing the equilibrium expression so the equilibrium expression for this one we have keq is equal to pcl3 times cl2 divided by pcl5 now substituting now the values Okay, so the value of PCL3, we have 0 0.025 molarity times 0 0.025 molarity divided by 0 0.20 molarity. Now, if we are going to input that into our, our, into our calculator, KEQ is equal to 0 0.003125 or we can have the scientific notation which is 3.12 or 3.13 because we are going to follow the two decimal places times 10 raised to negative 3 okay so our value so our answer for this one we have keq is equal to 3.13 times 10 raised to negative 3 so this will be our equilibrium constant now next uh, let's proceed with the sample problem number three okay so, sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen gas to, to produce sulfur trioxide. At equilibrium, the partial pressures of each gas were found to be 0 0.10 atmosphere, 0 0.30 atmosphere, and 0 0.45 atmosphere for SO2, O2, and SO3, respectively. Calculate the equilibrium constant Kp. Now, since we already have here the equation, so we are going to balance it. And as you can see, it is already balanced. So we can now proceed with the equilibrium or the equilibrium expression for this problem. So letter A, we have Kp because we're looking for Kp, okay, which is the constant pressure is equal to the partial pressure of the product which is SO3 so SO3 squared divided by the partial pressure of the reactants we have SO2 squared times O2 now substituting now the values okay for this equation we have for SO3 
we have 0 0.45 atmosphere squared divided by 0 0.10 atmosphere squared times 0 0.30 atmosphere. Okay? So, if we are going to input that into our calculator, we are going to arrive with the answer 67.5. Okay? So, our answer for this problem is Kp is equal to 67.5. That will be our final answer for sample problem number 3. Okay, now let's proceed with sample problem number 4. When NO combines with Cl2, it will yield NOCl in the process. The reaction has Kc value of 0 0.345. If there are 0 0.215 molarity and 0 0.679 molarity values of NO and Cl2 respectively, what is the concentration of the product NOCl? Okay, we can do the general steps for this one. We have to identify first to identify first the given. Okay. So our given Kc is equal to 0 0.345. Next we have Concentration of NO is equal to 0 0.215 molarity. And the concentration of Cl2 is equal to 0 0.679 molarity. Now we are looking for the value or the concentration of the product NOCl. Okay? Now, okay, now we can now proceed with the balancing of the chemical equation. So based on the problem, NO combines with Cl2 to yield okay, NOCl. Okay, so we need to balance this one by writing numerical coefficients. So we have 2 here, we have 1, and then we have 2. So this equation will be our reference, and it is already balance. Now, we can now proceed with the third step, which is to write the equilibrium expression. So, we have Kc is equal to the concentration of the product NOCl squared divided by the concentration of the reactants. We have NO squared times Cl Two. And the, the coefficients of each substance will be their exponents. Okay, now we can now substitute the values here. Okay, so we have for Kc we have 0 0.345 is equal to quantity NOCl squared divided by the value of NO, which is 0 0.215 molarity squared times the value of Cl2, which is 0 0.679 molarity. Okay. Now, we can cross multiply so that on the one side of the equation, we can only have NOCl. Okay. So, to cross multiply that, we have 0 0.345 times 0 0.215 molarity squared times 0 0.679 molarity is equal to NOCl squared. Okay. Now, we are just looking for the concentration of NOCl. So, in order for us to remove the exponents, we need to extract the roots. Okay? So, we need to extract the roots to remove the exponent. So, we can now cancel this one. We can now cancel this one. So, simplifying the equation, we have NOCl is equal to the, quant the square root of Quantity 0 0.345 times 
0.215 molarity squared times 0.679 molarity. Okay? Now, putting into our calculator, the value for this one will be, so NOCL is equal to 0.104. Okay, our unit, since we're looking for the concentration, it will be molarity. Okay, so simplifying our answer, so NOCL is equal to 0.104 molarity so this will be our concentration or this is the value of the concentration of the product nocl3 or nocl okay now let's proceed with our last sample problem so sample problem number five 25 mole of nocl is placed inside an empty five liter container at equilibrium 10 moles of cl2 was found to be in the container Calculate the value of Kc for this reaction. Now we have here the concentration or we have here the chemical reaction that we need to consider for this problem. So in order for us to get the value of Kc, we need to identify the concentration of each substance in this problem. Now, we cannot immediately uh, solve for Kc. Okay? So we are going to have here the ice method but before that we need to identify identify first the given so the given we have nocl there are 25 moles okay we also have cl2 there are 10 moles okay and we also have here the 5 liter container which is the volume of the container so now we can now proceed with the ICE method. So ICE stands for, for letter I, it stands for initial concentration. We have the letter C for change in concentration and letter E for equilibrium concentration. So we have here NO, CL, and then we have NO and we have Cl2. Okay, now the initial concentration of NOCl, we can calculate that by dividing the moles of NOCl with the volume of the container. Okay, so 25 divided by 5 liters is equal to 5 molarity. Okay, so that will be our initial uh, concentration. Now, since it was not uh, it was indicated in the problem that the container is empty. So meaning to say the concentration of NO is zero. Same is true with Cl2. Now since the products okay, in the equation is zero in its initial concentration, so the reaction will shift going to the right. Okay. Now, we are going to identify the change in the concentration that happened as the reaction shifts to the right. Now we are going to look into the mole, mole ratio of NO and Cl2. So as you can see here, the mole ratio is 2 is to 1. So as the reaction shifts to the right, okay, this Cl2 will increase by 1x and NO will increase by 2x, okay? And in here, since it shifts to the right, this, the, the, the value for, or the change in, in concentration for NOCL, it will decrease in 2x, okay? Now, if you're going to add the, the first two rows, I and C, okay, it will result to the equilibrium concentration. Okay, so we're going to add for NOCl we have 5 minus 2x for NO we have 2x and for Cl we have 1 or we can, we can just place 
x. Okay, we can just place x. Now, it was indicated that the equilibrium concentration of Cl2 is x. Okay, so the, the equilibrium concentration of Cl2 is x. And it was stated in the problem that at equilibrium, there are 10 moles of Cl2. Okay, so in order for us to get the concentration, the equilibrium concentration of Cl2, we need to divide 10 with the with 5 liters, okay, the volume. So, 10 divided by 5, our x now will become 2, okay? So, we have 2 molarity. Now, since we, all have, we already have x here, the value of x, we can now substitute x to the, to these values, okay? We can now substitute x here so that we can now get the concentration or the equilibrium concentration of NOCl and NO, okay? So, for 2x, our value, okay, substituting x, the value will be 2 times 2, we have 4 molarity. And in here, so, we have 5 minus 2x, okay? So, x will be 2, 5 minus the quantity of 2 times 2, so we have here 1, molarity okay so simplifying our answers the equilibrium uh, equilibrium concentration of each uh, each substance will become for nocl we have one molarity for no we have four molarity and for cl2 we have two molarity now, since we already have the concentration, the equilibrium concentration of the substances, we can now compute for Kc. So, Kc is the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. Okay? And based on the equation, okay, going back, okay, our products are NO and Cl2. So, our products, NOCl2, we have NO and Cl2. Now, the numeric, the, num, the, the, what do you call this one? The coefficients will be the exponents of the substances. So, if we are going, if we are going to look back at the equation, the coefficient of NO2, of NO is 2. So that will be squared. Then divide both then divided by NOCl. So we have here NOCl, which is our reactant. And since it also has a coefficient of 2, okay, so it will have a exponent of 2 or is squared. Okay? Now substituting now the values, we have NO, we have 4 molarity squared times Cl2 which is 2 molarity divided by NOCl squared the value is 1 molarity squared okay so substituting and then computing or calculating for the value of Kc we have so we are going to arrive with the value of 32 okay that will be the equilibrium constant for this problem okay so that ends our lesson for this week and i hope you learned a lot today regarding reversible chemical reactions and equilibrium constant you can uh, have other um, other references and other further readings by browsing your uh, web okay or surfing through the internet and other uh, sites okay in order for you to understand more about this topic i hope you learned a lot today and if you have any questions you can now you can just uh, contact your subject teacher for your queries okay that will be all thank you very much for listening